Hi guys, we've got uh, a great new project to announce to you. Um, we're going to make an axe, and hopefully, if it works well, then we'll do a whole series of axes to add to our great range of knives, great range of outdoor gear. And I just wanted to show you just some of the inspiration and how we've done a, a mock-up in funny enough this is all 3d printed and then we'll move on once we've got the design exactly right we'll move on to full production so on the table we've got here we've got three of the most popular models from three other brands and although they're extremely good um, I'm not going to take anything away from them this is about making something that we want, not being pigeonholed into, well, that's the best axe, have that one. We actually wanted to make, it's the same principle we had with our knives, and we wanted to make this an axe that we wanted to use all the time. So first we've got the Grand Sports Brooks small forest axe. Great axe, great head to it, great head shape, and great weight. But I've always felt the handle's a bit too short. It also doesn't come with a great axe mask. The next one's the Helco Black Forest Pack Axe, which again mimics the Grand Sports Brooks one, but has a typical Saxon style head. But the head's a little bit heavy on this one, although the handle's better because it gives it more, you get more grip with it. And then my personal favorite is the Holter Force AB Axe. It's got a great weight head, 700 grams, and it's got a longer handle. And I much prefer, if you look at the handle, it's a good four, six inches, I think, longer than the other two. And this great gives you the ability to use it two-handed. The other two, they're one-handed axes. Um, the AB, in my opinion, the best on the table, but it's also the most expensive. So my main problem with the, the Swedish axes is, one, cost. When we first started stocking Grand Sports Brooks years and years and years ago, they were, this axe was about 60 pounds. It's now in the region of 115 to 120. It's doubled in price in less than 10 years, which is crazy. Um, the Hulk Force AB is now 135, probably 140 pounds, and they're just getting too expensive. They have this. The other thing is the problems with these. Hulk Force are much better insofar as you can actually get some stock, albeit a bit sporadically. Grand Force Brooks are notorious for when we used to stock them. You'd be lucky if you had stock for four months of a year. Eight months of the year, you'd be out of stock of everything. So you said you were a Grand Sports Brooks stockist, but if you didn't have any stock, you weren't really a stockist. So one of the, the best alternative on the market was Helco. Um, German company, produced some great axes. The, the best advantage of these is that the quality is the same, but an axe like this would retail for about £60. Yeah, it's nearly half the price of the Swedes. So anybody can design the best product in the world if budget is absolutely no limit. But at the rate that the Swedes are going, those axes are going to be £150 before the, the year, out, year is out, I reckon. Especially with the shortage of supply and the support, it's shortage in manufacture. So this is where uh, we're at with the TBS axe at the moment. We're starting off with one axe and we may, if it's successful, proceed to make a couple of other models as well. So everything you see here we've done with a CAD program, computer aided design and a 3D printer. So everything here is actually plastic and that gives us a great starting point before we move on to the tooling. So tooling in for, this, for an axe is incredibly expensive. Essentially what you have to do is make the tools and then if it's not the prototype's not exactly right, you then have to remake the tools. And that practically doubles or then triples your cost if you have to keep trying to get the, everything right. 
So if you can get everything right in plastic first, when you then move on to production, you're potentially cutting down your, your costs in the future. So this is where we started. The idea being we wanted a, an axe head that was about 700 grams. But we also, I love the fact that on things like the AB and some other axes that we've had, you've got a bit of a hammer back to the axe. And it's not for, you know, banging in huge lumps of metal, but it's great for knocking in wedges, uh, knocking in tent pole, tent pegs that you carved, anything like that. It's always a great addition. It makes your tool so much more useful in the field. This is the first one, and we found actually that this was going to come out too heavy, so we then moved on to the, a, this is actually the second prototype, we moved on to the third prototype head. Okay, this, this might look a bit odd in blue, but uh, it's the plastic that was in the printer at the time. So we, essentially it's the same axe head as before, but what we've done now is changed the back end shape. So give us more focus here. It also shaves down some of the weight, so we're now down to an approximate weight of about 690 grams to 700 grams, which is an ideal weight for using as a small forest or a pack axe. So the next progression is to move on to prototyping a handle. And I personally really like a longer handle on an axe than you usually get with a sort of small forest axe size. A small forest axe size comes to about here and we're adding on about four to six inches. And this allows you to, one, give you a, a two-handed grip for more powerful chopping, but then we've slimmed it down in the middle here, and this is great for small splitting and finer work. But then we've just beefed up the this area so that you can then effectively use it as a knife. You know, you could you could quite easily make feather sticks or any small fine work that you're going to be doing. Deliberately giving it making it so that your hand is almost protected, half, but at least half protected from any work you do. So the initial prototype of that hand, handle actually had a, a very shallow slope here and it, it didn't give enough grip, it was just too wide around this area. But we specifically wanted a distinct stop for your hands. So when you are using it, either one or two handed, the likelihood of your hand coming off the end is much reduced with a nice bulbous end to the handle. It gives you so much more control. So the next thing we're going to be moving on to, which I can do in the workshop and I will do over the next couple of weeks, is a, some leather work to go with it. So we'll make a, a good quality axe mask and we'll probably uh, have an overstrike guard. I'm not a huge fan of an overstrike guard, but I know lots of people are and we will offer it in different packages. All in all, we think we're in a really great position to take this forward to a full production axe. I'm really happy with the design, I'm really excited to see how it all comes out. We've still got a little bit of work to do on it, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have something within the next two to three months to show you. But we'll update you then, how we get on.